Thank you for joining. Chris the Bull here from Esper Lux. Joining me at oh, from Watches and Wonders, and we are in a beautiful, beautiful space, new space, is Max Buser of MBNF. Max, great to see you again. How are you? I am good. Next time, don't choose the last day of the fair. Yeah. So we actually right. look a little bit more fresh. Yeah. But it's cool. It's cool. A, lot, a lot of eye makeup. Yeah. So that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. You should, yeah, raccoon eyes, no good. Let's talk a little bit about something novel. Normally we talk about watches right away, but this time we're talking about the space that we are in today. This beautiful uh, new home for MBNF. It's our home. We finally found our home. It actually started in a home. It started in my flat 18 years ago. And then we had different places we worked in. None we were really proud of. They were offices de facto. Two years ago, I started thinking, I really need a new location because we were growing for the first time in 10 years, practically. And I looked for, I think, the better part of a good year. And all I could find were these open space, big plateaus with neons on the ceiling, like broker places. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, this is horrible. And so we went on and saw more and more of these. And one day I'm visiting just the other side there. I'm looking at one more of these Looks big really things. Nice. And yeah, right. And, uh, and the real estate gentleman brings me at the back to show me that there are two entrances. And he says, oh, what do you think, Sarah? And I'm like, oh, you know what? And I see this old house, the century old house with its yeah. park. And he said, you know what, really, I, I want that. I don't want these modern things. And the guy, instead of just shrugging, looks at me and says, really? I'm like, yeah. He says, okay, maybe there's something which can be done. And actually, this house was created in 1907, won prizes, was a, actually a family who, they were entrepreneurs who were making uh, porcelain, was actually up for rent. And um, we visited it, but it was in such a dire situation. It was like nobody had done anything in this house for 60 years. They were like, nah, this is not possible. So we continued looking for other spaces. And after a couple of months, Serge, my technical director, is also my partner in the company, looked at me and said, why don't we go and see that old house again? I was like, seriously? So he said, yeah, let's go and see that old house again. And we, we came and we looked at it with what could be done. And then we sat down with the owner who liked us and we started dreaming and it took a year of work. And we're now all here. We moved in in September last year and the vibe is so different. You know my team. Our team is incredible. Yeah. Everybody like, loves to work together. To, the it's, 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 it's real great energy yeah. in it. But the level just went a whole different level when they came here. And you can see it's where we work at home, de facto. Since the COVID of remote working, yeah. working at home, we are, this is our home. Yeah. And everybody's together because before we had different locations and now everybody works together. That's awesome. So watchmaking is on the first floor. Then you've got meeting spaces on the second floor and, and third floor. So watchmaking, laboratory is all on, on what, ground floor? Yeah, sure, ground floor. <laughs> and, yeah. So, and then on the first floor, you've got uh, logistics, which is an enormous part of our company. We have over half a million components in stock for a oh, brand nice. which does 30 watches a month. There are over 400 operations in a base plate. All these things that we have to organize and there's 585 components in the yeah. watch, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the amount of logistics going into this is incredible. The whole uh, customer relationship department, we don't call them sales anymore because there's nothing to sell. It's just how do we interact with all the people who are either owners or want to become owners and the whole communication team with Harris are there. And then on the top floor, we've got the R, the creative, which is my place, oh, where we are, the creative yeah. and, um, and the R&D, which where we've got four fully fledged engineers, plus Stephen McDonald is working in Belfast. We've got seven, eight watchmakers assembling the movements, and we've got actually five engineers working on the new movements, which is, it never happens that way. Most brands will have one engineer for 20 watchmakers. Yeah. So that also shows you how we work. Is it surreal? I've had to look back a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, we did the Catalogue Raisonné, the book. Yeah. Um, we did the, the event on 20 calibers in 17 years, which I'm, I don't look back often, and I actually was forced to. And um, when I look back, there are all sorts of things happening to me. First is I never expected to be where I am today, the company to be where it is. Personally and professionally, I'm incredibly grateful. This is way, way, way more incredible than ever anything I dreamt of. And you also look back at being grateful because we went through such tough times. 
Mm. I think it's really the appreciation. If everything is easy, it's very you don't really feel grateful. No doubt. It's the tough moments. No and the same for you, I'm sure. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's the tough moments, uh, the doubts, the uh, the moments where we nearly went bankrupt, the moments where I was running around the world, uh, yeah. not sleeping more than four hours a night or for three weeks, just trying to explain what I was doing to, to people who would maybe be interested. Yeah. All the issues on the R&D side, all the issues on the production side. Uh, I mean, being an entrepreneur is dealing with issues. Yeah. And... I used to be overwhelmed with it many years ago and now we've gone through so much that whatever people throw at me i'm like okay we'll deal with it yeah. it's like okay whatever we'll deal with it but um look honestly it's a it's a very emotional moment yeah well awesome congratulations it's a beautiful spot you know when i visited about a month ago you asked me you know what do you think i said this is to me this is this is mbnf right it's old school new school it's you know uh, it, tradition, avant-garde, right? And, you know, the exterior has, you know, has history and tradition and the interior has all this beautiful design and... Uh, and quirky, and, and cool, creativity. crazy stuff. Yeah. And, uh... All right, fine. Enough about uh, where we are. Let's talk about what we're looking at. The introduction of the first stainless steel LMP Legacy Machine Perpetual with the updated rectangular pushers in a salmon dial. Over the last uh, three years, there were a lot of Evos which came out. And so on this particular piece, there were no more, except for the LM101, there are no more classic legacies to be had new. You can buy them pre-owned, but yeah. there are no new pieces. And I think it was time after like a year and a half of no more classic uh, perpetuals. So we had done a certain amount of materials already. Platinum, red gold, yellow gold, white gold, uh, palladium, titanium. Uh, it was the turn of steel. We, for the first time, did a salmon base. There's a lot of confusion. It's not a salmon dial. The dials are white, of course. And we upgraded with the, the new rectangular pushers, which we'd actually introduced for the first time in the Palladium. It's funny because when it was launched in 2015 and we started working on it in 2011, I never envisioned that version. I was not a salmon dial person. No. This year I'm seeing all sorts of salmon yeah. dial pieces Big coming trends. out, watches and wonders. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Damn, I must have been influenced. And I hate that. I hate the fact that I actually... They got to you. Yeah, it's, it's seeped in. And there's this old um, saying, which is attributed to Coco Chanel, who says, he who insists on his creativity has no memory. It means that if you think that you're being brilliant, having this great new idea, it's just that you all these influences have seeped into you. Yeah. And then you come out with it. And I'm sort of thinking, why didn't I do this before? Because it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's stunning. It's there we go. So now it's here. It's the only classic perpetual you can get. It's not limited. We've crafted about 20 pieces a year. And uh, I must admit, we, when we come out with variations, we're always a little bit nervous because it's only a variation. And mm. for us, it feels like, uh, are, we, are we not being creative enough? And everybody went nuts. Yeah, it was. Sure. It was... Right. So on social media, on the, all the different things. Like, I want one. How can I get one? I was like, really? But that's great. I'm, so I'm super happy. And what's the price point going to be on the stainless steel? I think it's 164000 Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if cool. I'm not wrong. Uh, X uh, VAT, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's stunning. I'll say it again. When I first held the titanium version in my hands, I said, this is top three watches I've ever held in my hands and put on my wrist. I'm a huge perpetual calendar guy. I love practical complications. And it's, as you guys put it, it was made with the collector in mind. And what's important also, especially when you get an independent brand watch, is it's not only a product, it's the story of the people behind it. Sure. Between what you see here and what I'm wearing is 10 years of the life of Stephen McDonnell. Yeah. But he actually virtually abandoned in the middle of that project. He called us one day and said, look, I, I just can't find a solution. And we we're like two years in. And I remember Serge told him, like, look, take your family on a holiday. Go do something else and come back. And like a couple of days later on his holiday, he called us up. He said, I think I found a solution. Mm -hmm. And all these stories, not only is it a beautiful object, is it incredibly easy to use? It's foolproof, etc. It's the story of that man. Yeah. And that's what I want people not to forget because that's what really makes independent watchmaking independent. Yeah, no doubt. Um, the last time I saw you was Geneva Watch Days. The market was still on fire. Obviously some adjustments are starting to take place. 
but at the same time, perhaps it's not, it's not the big adjustment that we were all kind of bracing for. What are your thoughts on the market today? So like a year or yeah, a year ago, I was a little bit jealous that some brands were selling at three, four, five times retail and we were only reselling at 20 or 30% over. Uh, but that meant that we had no speculators coming into MBNF. So it meant that when in other brands they've disappeared because suddenly there was no liquidity anymore. Yeah, especially top tier brands, mass product, mass produced brands. In this case, yeah. it was the same, same people who still wanted it a year ago still want it today. The other thing is nobody's ever bought an MBNF because they couldn't get a Nautilus or an RM, you never buy something like that because you didn't get one of the super hot You pieces. graduate from that. You buy an MBNF seven, eight years ago, unlike any independent or except for Philippe before, you'd buy it and if you tried to sell it, you'd lose your shirt. Yeah, you were gonna hurt. Yeah. It, was, it was part of the deal. So if you bought it, it was by pure love. Yeah. When suddenly in 20, uh, late 2020, early 21, the demand started growing like crazy around our pieces and there were none left in stores, the secondary market prices started going up. Sure. So you wouldn't lose any more 40, 50%, you would maybe lose 10%. Sure. And suddenly we saw hundreds of clients arrive. I mean, I mean, even thousands. Because for every insane lover who was ready to lose their shirt, we suddenly had 10 pragmatic lovers who said, I've been following MBNF. I like what you do, but I wasn't ready to lose 30, 40, 50 grand. Yeah. Now, maybe if we only lose five or 10, which is a lot of money, but for some people it's not that much. If I, I wear it two, three years and I lose five, ten thousand on a hundred thousand franc watch, that's okay. okay. And suddenly from one, we, we ended up with ten persons wanting, and it's not only us. Yeah. A lot of other yeah, independents sure. got that. Sure. As long as our secondary market prices remain close to retail. I think Within we've reason, got this yeah. insane amount of people, thousands of people for our, we did 345 watches last year. Yeah. We're trying to do a little bit more than 400 this year, but the way it's going, I'm not sure we'll manage because there's so many logistics and, and supplier issues. But um, I think we're, we're pretty much okay. Well, I think that covers it all for today. I appreciate you making the time. It's always great to see you. And congrats again on this beautiful home. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank Chris, you, Max. Take care. Thanks for joining us, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all new upcoming videos, especially from Washington Wonders in Geneva. Thanks again.